Hey guys, this is Ghost57 coming at you from the power of YouTube through the internet itself. Okay guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to put a static IP address on your true NASCAL server. Stay tuned guys and I'll show you how easy that is. Okay guys, so the server we're gonna be using is the Dell PowerEdge R720 XD. We've actually been using this in a couple other of our videos. So if you haven't been following me, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. We do release one video a week. And if you're interested in server tech, this is definitely gonna be a really fun channel for you because we have a lot of plans for this 23 bay behemoth. Even though it's a little bit older, this thing has a lot of life left in it. And the cool thing is you can find these all day on eBay, anywhere from 100 bucks all the way to 500 bucks, depending on what comes in it. This one right here was 150 bucks off of eBay. Definitely a pretty nice two CPU, 108, 128 gigabytes of RAM. And it also came with eight terabytes of storage, which is really, really cool. But anyways, guys, so uh, next video we're gonna be doing is a Plex video. But before we get into Plex and all that fun stuff, we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a static IP address. Just in case uh, we do have other people that wanna use it, we don't want the DNS server resetting our IP address every so often. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. This one's gonna be a fast, easy video today. Okay guys, so it's pretty easy. So I already logged into the online TrueNASCAL GUI. And you can kind of see the stats I have right here. They're pretty good for a couple hundred dollars. Like I said, $150 server. I got a really good deal on this thing. It has dual uh, Xeon CPUs, the uh, E5 2670s, and they um, their base clock right there is 2.6 gigahertz, which is a pretty fast uh, CPU for its time. And then you can see all that lovely RAM we have, and it's all ECC memory. So this is DDR3, but it's still, it's okay for what we want it to, to do. It's not very fast, but there is a lot of st uh, storage capacity, or I should say memory, that's gonna help us out in the future when we're gonna do more VMs and apps. Uh, right now, we're really not doing that much besides hosting a Minecraft server. If you want to learn how to do that, I'll leave a card right on top. You can click on that and check that out. Um, definitely pretty cool. We've done some cool editing of the server. We can actually use uh, ray tracing and all that fun stuff, including some additional mods. So if you're interested in that, the card's right on top. But for today, we're going to go ahead and actually do something I probably should have done a long time ago, and that is setting up a static IP address. Okay, guys, so now we're just going to go right over here to network. And you can see I actually have two uh, IP addresses because I do have two Ethernet cables plugged in. Again, if normally if you only have one plugged in, that's the way it should be. Mine is a little bit different. But we're going to go ahead and change this one right here to a static IP address. Very, very easy to do, guys. We're just going to go to the side right here and click on Edit. And then we're going to go to an unclick DHCP. That's the dynamic IP address. And we're gonna go ahead and do unclick the auto config for IPv6 address. And then we're gonna right over here where it says alias, we're gonna go ahead and add this same IP address. Again, um, since I already have things associated to like a Minecraft server, um, my image server, and our upcoming video is gonna be on Plex, we wanna make sure this stays the same so you don't have to reconfigure anything. So it's pretty easy to do to set up an IP address on TrueNASCAL. All we're going to do is type in that address over here. So it's 192.168.1.50. And right here is going to be the number 24. Most residential and businesses will have a 24 on the end of it. So just make sure it matches up and hit save. And then right here where it says editing interface will result in default gateway being removed. Go ahead and hit skip. We're going to go ahead and keep the same. This is uh, the one that we have set up already, so don't worry about that. And now you can actually see it's just set up with IP address like so. And now you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, this means you set up an IP address that is static, which is great. Uh, keep in mind these changes will not be uh, saved if you don't test it. So now that we see that there, we're going to go ahead and test the change. 
We're going to hit confirm and test, which is good about TrueNAS uh, scale. Um, if you don't test it, uh, it won't save it, which is good. So if you he see there, it actually tested and worked out. So now we just have to hit save changes, save. And just like that, guys, we have made a permanent change, turning our TrueNAS scale into a static IP address, which is very, very important, especially for the later videos we're going to do about Plex. I do have a Minecraft server set up where um, I actually use a different IP address because it was not static and it was dynamic and it switched and caused a bunch of problems. So definitely this should be your first step after getting your system set up. Your storage and share setup is to set a static IP address. And to be honest, guys, TrueNAS scale makes it very, very easy to do. Just in a couple easy steps, you are good to go. So hopefully, guys, you like this video and hopefully you learned something. As always, guys, please hit that bell notification icon. I do come up with a weekly video. And we've been doing a lot of server stuff. Our next server video is going to be quite exciting. We're going to be setting up a Plex server. I'm going to show you how to actually make your own Netflix per se with a couple easy steps. So that'll be the next one, guys. As always, guys, I had a great time with y'all today, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Ghost57 out. Bye-bye for now, friends. See y'all soon.